disclose their voting right now, but uh, that's the price that I'm willing to pay. So tonight I was supposed to launch a book, which I was very excited to launch. It's called The Selected Scribblings and Scrawlings with the Amazing Manchester Press. So it's a lot, but they didn't arrive. So let's forget that, let's pretend I never said it. Such as the vagaries of British avant-garde poetry publishing. So I thought, in face of such a disappointment, what could I do to lift myself up? And I thought very hard about all these ideas I'd had over the years about the normal poetry reading, which was a huge inspiration for Poem Brew, going to so many uh, vanilla recitations and thinking what I always wanted to do. So tonight, I picked five. And I'm just going to read five poems that I'm going to select at random from the library, each in a way that uh, I dreamed of doing in front of people and never had the guts to do as such an important and benevolent institution as a poetry library or society or, or something of that extent. So the first one's nice and gentle. Um, I come to the poetry library a lot, and one of the things I've always wanted to do is uh, just read from the stacks and have a bit of a browse but in front of a live audience. Now, I always have trouble with these machines. <laughs> they always tend to trap me in. So I can get it in. The mood lighting. The trick is, if you don't want to get crushed, let's really give it a good pull. Hmm. What is in here? OK, we're down at the seas. Nina Cassian. It's getting a bit dark for me. Perhaps best if I don't read the name of the person. Oh God, I'm not going to read him. He's awful. <laughs> um, I could I could read her. A bit overrated. Uh, let's just try something random. Let's pick a short one. Everybody likes short poems. Underground. I have become my own dark lantern to light me as I mine the scene of sorrow. It's a bit much. For rage will burst out from a candle's gutter, lazy metaphor. Run along veins, a shock of searing flame. I need to see where to put my feet, but cannot bear to look around too closely. Unshielded, I might explode into grief, torching a dangerous conflagration. The soul always burns with the fiercest heat. It's a good poem. A little bit much for me, but a nice poem, I think. So number two, let's go and fetch another book. <laughs> uh, I have a lot of stuffed toys, much to the um, disappointment of those that love me. <laughs> One of my collections, uh, and this is this is one of my favourites. Uh, Times North. Times North. <laughs> <laughs> no one but you and I can or shall ever know what secret counties lie under this fall of snow. <laughs> Not finished yet. Second stanza. <laughs> out, of, out of times north this fall, <laughs> under whose coverlet we hide and bide in all the timeless times we meet. Take a bow. noise a human can make is the unexpected noise uh, and often as a child before I was aware of uh, gentle bullying I would goose people's floating rib I have oh, that noise but I, I can do it because uh, I do a lot of martial arts I understand how the carotid artery and the jugular when compressed can affect the funny noise okay so I'm just going to read chant 
for reapers. Pope Wilfrid thought I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> Wine we have spilt, oh dryads on our knees, have made, have made you our oblation. What shall save us from the dearth if you be fled? Who shall comfort and kindle? I'm not putting it on. So, uh, sadly we delve the furrow, string the vine, oh slid flimsy bird and topples. Down we tumble the woods if you be dumb. Stripped of honey and garland. Why do you hide, O oh triads, when we call with bleeding and uplifted? Smile and bless us again that all be well. Smile again on your children. I'm interested in um, a lack of oxygen in the brain. I've always found it uh, creates altered states of understanding. Let's try and get through this. Passage to the city. Good morning. I am travelling. While the man next to her, for time for time, throws his head, glances briefly. Sorry, I can't get through that one. That's difficult. Okay, so my final and my fifth. Make sure I put this back in the right place. Um, I've always wanted to. Um, Because it feels like a really one-sided process. To me. So um, I'm just going to read the poem, and because um, it's not mine, I know this is not egotistical. Uh, if you like it, read Hamlet. Painfully funny now. At first, it happens that the sky is above your head, more than the earth beneath your feet. Later, usually, it's your head that matters, although before rain, also your feet, and later yet, it gets clearer and clearer until only the eternal things are left. Cheap clothes and whatever burns. Anybody like that? Reading next is Patrick Cosgrove. <laughs>